Welcome. It's good to have you here tonight. Let us uh, pray as we begin our time together tonight. Loving God, tonight we approach the mystery of your love for us, a love that remains through pain, abandonment, denial, a love that transforms death into hope and life. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death with us now. Be a source of strength to us in these coming hours. And remind us during these darkest moments that you are eternally with us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, today is, today is known as the saddest day in the Christian year. And our service tonight reflects that tone. Our sanctuary is stark, barren. We come into God's presence in sorrow. A tenebrae service is a service of darkness. It's based on a tradition dating back to the 12th century in which candles are used to represent the various stations of the cross or stages involved in the Passion story. Our service tonight will contain a series of readings and choral presentations which will relate to us again the story of Jesus' betrayal, his arrest, his suffering, and his crucifixion. Thank you again for joining us. I present to you now Rebecca Summers, Dr. John Hillebrandt, and the First United Methodist Church Chancel Choir. The cross of Christ is an eternal reminder of God's unconditional love. This day we stand in the shadow of the cross and we gratefully remember.
It was the first day of unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus asking, Where do you want us to make the preparations for the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. The, di the disciples did as Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table surrounded by his disciples. He said to them, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He then took a cup and, after giving thanks, said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He then took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same with the cup, saying, This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Remember me. While still at the table with his disciples, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, 
one of you will betray me. In despair, they begin to say to him one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who dips his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Woe to that one who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for that one if he had not been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, Yes, it is you. Later that evening, Jesus told his followers, This very night you will all become deserters. But Peter declared, Even if all the others fall away, I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to Peter, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus and, Jesus and his disciples went to a place called Gethsemane, where he said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be deeply troubled. I am overwhelmed with sorrow, even to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not my will but your will be done. Holy. 
Jesus returned from his place to find his disciples sleeping. Get up, he said to them, for my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. <clears throat> Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came here to do. Immediately, they stepped forward and seized Jesus. He said to the crowd, Have you come with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the courts of the temple teaching, and yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled.
The crowd took Jesus to the, the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter replied, Man, I am not. About an hour later, still, another asserted, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But he said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then he remembered the words of Jesus. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. The next morning, the council of elders, both the chief priests and the teacher of the law, met together as Jesus was brought before them. They said to him, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe. They asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied, You are correct in saying that I am. What further testimony do we need, they said. We, we have heard it ourselves from his own lips. They then brought Jesus before Pilate. But Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they were insistent. 
Pilate, after learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, sent him to Herod. But finding nothing for which to convict him, Herod sent him back to Pilate. Finally, Pilate said to Jesus' accusers, I have examined this man in your presence and have, found, and have not found him guilty of any of your charges. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. Then they all shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas! Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The shouts of the crowd eventually prevailed. Pilate finally granted their demand. He released the one who had been in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they had desired. As they led Jesus away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, and they laid the cross on him, making him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including many who mourned for him. When they arrived at the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, 
for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals kept deriding Jesus, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? We have been condemned justly and are getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness swept over the whole land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.
The centurion, after witnessing what had happened, praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. When the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they were deeply saddened as they returned to their homes. All those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. Jesus Christ, who though being in the very form of God, did not consider equality with God, something to be exploited, emptied himself, taking the very nature of a servant, being born in human likeness, being in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him endured the cross and disregarded its shame. <laughs> 